you guys have both filmed intimate scenes for television. Right. Correct? Sure. Not uh, together, to be very clear. Yeah, yeah not, not, not together yet. Yet. Yes. Yeah, not together yeah. yet. Could the, only be um, so lucky. You're listening to Studio 22. Welcome to Studio 22. I'm Bronco Hearn. I'm here with my co-host, Will Meldman. And I'm sitting here with one of my good friends, mm. Casey Diedrich. What's up? How's it going, bro? It's going good. It's going great. How are you guys doing? Really good, man. Thank yeah. you for joining us. Absolutely. Dude. Thank you so much for having us. Big fan of the show. Happy to be here. Hey, um, we're big fans, too. Of, of what? Our show. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, I would hope so. I would yeah, hope so. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna, on that note, I'm just gonna <laughs> yeah. so sip, sip some. Oh, this whiskey's good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we might pour some tequila in here. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you need it, let us know. <sighs> oh man, my if I if I drink whiskey right now, my chest would be on the floor in like five seconds. I'm not oh. big on like grain alcohol. No, no. no. Uh, Are you a tequila guy? Tequila or like vodka? I I wouldn't have guessed with all the uh, Casamigo bottles all over the house. So. Yeah, there's some tequila around. Here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, uh, I used to be absolutely whiskey and beer all day. Like together, you drink them sometimes together. together, dude. I just I went in and then uh, I woke up one day and actually where we met was at a Casamigos party, um, and I was like, well, all they have is tequila, Casamigos, yeah. so I'm gonna start drinking that. Whatever, it might be a painful morning, but we'll yeah. find out. I woke up the next day with energy feeling amazing and I had a great night. So from that, then okay. on out, I, uh, I drank Casamigos. Are you sure it was tequila? Because that sounds like ecstasy to me. Yeah. <laughs> See, here's the thing. Can you go? Can you leave? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna fuck myself. I'll be right back. Um, every time I come to your house, Brock, you have like full tequila bottles all over your kitchen. Yeah. And I'm assuming that's because of you, Will. It is. It is yeah. actually... So you've single-handedly helped Can, his alcoholism. No, yeah. I <laughs> I'm think just like, he's not an alcoholic. I'm just kidding. I, it, was, uh, it was a proud night when we converted him to tequila Amazing. again after yeah. uh, avoiding it for so long. And that's, you know, as Randy would say, it, it doesn't make you hungover. If, yeah. if, you just, if you can manage to like just drink on the rocks or like soda and tequila, right. you're, you'll be totally fine. Yeah, I, you, I can yeah. do like seven or eight and... It's right, like yeah. a warm up, you know, and then just kind of go from there. See that's, what happens. That's the so, great thing with Casa. You just put it on the table yeah. and, you know. <laughs> Good to go. <laughs> that's kind of funny now that I think about it. You know, we've been friends for almost a decade. We've okay. been friends for a very long time as well. Yeah. And we kind of all technically bonded over tequila. We did. Because one of our first times hanging out was right before you're about to leave for your show. For sure. Yeah, that's right. Um, and he, uh, he surprised me with a... Uh, uh, a bottle of Reposado Casamigos, which is my favy. Hell yeah. Same Z's. That's, that's short for favorite. <laughs> FYI. Um, <laughs> did you say same Z's? Yeah. <laughs> yes. What, uh, what show were, were you about to go out on? Um, I, um, I was about to go shoot season one of uh, In the Dark, which is the show I'm currently on now. Fantastic. Um, and, season uh, four. Season four just started airing two weeks ago. Um, Congrats. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's, uh, it's been exciting exciting it's been crazy four years that's for sure absolutely it's been fun to watch you don't have to say that no i mean yeah it's been fun to watch where do you guys shoot my <laughs> <laughs> i can't tell those you guys this is this is our banter this is how we go yeah. it's, no, it's, really, it's gonna be a fun episode yeah um, um uh where do we shoot yeah we shoot in um in freezing cold toronto um no oh, offense wow. to toronto toronto's toronto's a great city but uh um since COVID, we got pushed back more and more each season. So we would start the beginning of, of winter and we would finish at the end of winter. So, you know, it was, it was tough. Never really saw the sun, snowed, rained a lot. Um, wow, I'm really up talking Toronto right now. Yeah. Um, um, <laughs> no, Drake, I mean, please don't be mad. Please. Um, it's, I mean, so many great shows and films are shot up there. Yeah. There's, there's yeah. a whole... Yeah. Vancouver this, too. Vancouver, yeah. yeah. I mean, the city's incredible. Mm. But... It's when you're sitting there yeah. for six, seven months in the freezing cold winter, it makes it, you know, it can be tough. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, the, the third season, it was like right in the, the peak of COVID and we, we were quarantined for eight months, eight months straight. And, oh, wow. And, uh, you know, we weren't really allowed to leave or go anywhere. Everything was closed. 
you know, basically just going to work and coming home. And then anytime you left the country, you'd have to quarantine for two weeks. So I spent like a month by myself. Um, it was awesome. It was awesome. Um, no, did, I'm, what, what, uh, do you have any introspection in those moments? Uh, a lot of, a lot of time alone, a lot of time alone. Um, a lot of call of duty. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. We uh, also have had some great times online. We did. Oh man. Yeah. He showed me that game. Like, obviously I knew what it was, but like started playing with, when we were kind of quarantining in LA at the beginning of COVID, yeah, we really like just started playing at night because yeah. it's like what you can't go out, yeah, you can't exactly. go to restaurants, can't go to bars. Call of Duty, man. I feel like Activision like secretly knew that this was coming, and and they were just like, fuck it, let's put the game out now. Let's drop, let's drop, game drop, drop the drop. biggest game that ever hit the market. And but yeah, to its credit, I mean, it's one of the in most insane like co op experiences I think yeah. you can have. Online. especially having a team when when it's your friends and they're good you know and you guys can all sit there it's like you're in the room without having to be with anyone right else, but you guys are going on these crazy missions to yeah after after about the sixth or seventh hour you're in it like the walls start closing in and you're just like you, you're there you're really in it you know you are the avatar charlie's in the bushes it's just it gets it gets <laughs> tough man it gets, is, it's tough man it's it's hard out there yeah I mean, um no you leave no man behind though no i was heavy support so i'm yeah. like rocket launcher Okay. And like, I just, I, I kind of hang with the pack. I don't try to be the hero. Yeah, you don't go in like just, guns blazing. Just survive and like kind of hang out in the back. If someone gets close to our group, you got a rocket coming at you. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. I remember, do you still have that same computer you built maybe two years ago? Yeah, I do. I do. You? Yeah. I think it was a beast. I, uh, it was my first computer I ever built. Um, I was a console player and then mm. I, I moved to uh, the PC. Um, and now I look down upon the console players. Wait, you built a built PC? a PC gaming PC? Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah. How? How? Uh, I had a buddy come over who's built them before, and basically him and I just kind of did it together. Do you, Do you like buy all the components separately? Yeah, I bought, then... I bought everything separately. Um, had no idea what I was doing. Um, and uh, took about <laughs> took like twelve hours, thirteen hours to build this thing. Really? Yeah. So, that I would think it would take longer that's crazy that's pretty cool it doesn't take that long we just kept fucking up right um, and uh and after after a certain <laughs> point we would we call on a friend you know like who wants to be, be a millionaire we'd like call someone in. Like, yeah. yeah um uh yeah we had a call on a lifeline multiple times but uh we eventually got it done and uh been gaming on that ever since and uh awesome yeah yeah, yeah since covid happened too like i've got a bunch of friends who uh have built computers and there's these chips that you need that you just can't get anymore. The graphic cards and and the graphic stuff. cards, yeah, graphic cards are extremely hard to get right now. Crazy. Yeah. So you know, I'm still on console, whatever, dude. Yeah, whatever. I think it's like the the precious metal trade, and like they're all kind of made in the yeah. same place. But also, I think the massive production as well, um, and then maybe probably with with stuff going on with shipping, you know, code also. But but I think there is such a massive use. It's like what they say about uh, cell phones. How right. We don't have enough of it. Yeah, like you said precious the metals. The resource yeah, to exactly. create them. Yeah. But you know, it is what it is. We're still gaming, right? You still have your uh, projector screen? You play on that? <laughs> I don't know. I, went, I, went <laughs> I, I come over monitor. to his house and you just have his projector going. Just that in the monitor. Man, man cave. This <laughs> epic man cave. Thank you, bro. Yeah. It, uh, it made it actually very difficult to play because I'm like, <gasps> like <laughs> cracking my neck trying to, <laughs> trying to look at the screen because it took up the whole wall. Yeah. Right? That uh, thing is great, though. A lot of fun, though, dude. Um, Let's um, bring it back to the show, dude. Yeah, yeah. Well, oh, I forgot we're on the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I meant, I meant your show. Mm. All right. Um, okay. Let's talk about episode three. Uh, let's talk about episode three. What, what, what do you want? Episode what, three what do you want to talk about? I mean, I have a, a favorite part, dude. Favorite part. What? What, what, what is, is your, your favorite? What part? did you say earlier? Earlier to me, you said I. What? What about Max? Max has Max is a uh, uh, well endowed. Well endowed, according to the show. Court in the show. Well, the yeah, show. yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, because he, you're a great actor, by the way. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Episode three. You know what happens? Episode three. Um, I need. I need a. I need a fifteen minute break. I need to talk to you outside for like. Okay. It's a good twenty. Come minutes. back with like three, two black guys <laughs> and a broken. Um, well, yeah. I mean, I guess. I guess that's the truth because he Max breaks his penis in episode three. That's yeah. a great episode. Wow. Did a lot of research on that. Did you? Yeah. How's your Google search look? <sighs> you don't want to. You don't want to. <laughs> you don't want to look at that search. Private mode, right? Yeah. You yeah, yeah. Put up the private mode, yeah. and then you're there's good. A, there's a private, I have to like type it in, delete. Mode. Type it in, delete. You know. <laughs> Uh, do you ever feel like when you're researching a role or looking something up that you know like you're like i shouldn't be looking at this but yeah when you're gonna come back to me in any way right right am i just, gonna have to explain this is my job yeah you kind of go down that that deep 
rabbit hole. Hey. Are we talking about porn? Or are we talking about <laughs> uh, what? what? Research. Research. Re- oh, research. research. Sorry. Yeah. I'm so, I'm terribly sorry. Um, yeah. Well, you guys share a commonality in terms of you guys have both filmed um, intimate scenes for television. Right. Correct. Sure. Sure. Not uh, together to be very clear. Yeah. yeah not, not, not together. together yet. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Not together. Yeah. Yet. Could only the, um, be so lucky. Dude, I don't know how I would react in that situation. So I'm like, it's very impressive to be able to do that, but I wouldn't know where to start. Um, <laughs> what, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think I started off in, in soap operas. I was on uh, days of our lives for, for about four years. Um, and you shoot an episode a day, sometimes two. And you, it's like learning a whole play every day. Um, and that kind of got me into the, the, the framework of like laid the foundation for me of like memorizing lines and, getting in front of a camera and just being comfortable. Um, yeah. So yeah, that really, that was kind of like my stepping stone in, in the beginning. Uh, so yeah. Same. How many pages do you guys shoot? Uh, I mean, there was one time I did three episodes in one day and that was like, Oh my God. What's I was like probably 80, 90 pages of dialogue for the full day. Cool. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've been there with Tyler Perry. One of the yeah, first it's, things. It's like a full film. It is. It, it, it really is. It's like a, it's like a full one act play. Um, so proper. They, and you get, you get like two chances. Like yeah. That, that's pretty much it. Yeah. They're like, Two takes and yeah, you're two off. takes. Just go. You sit there and you're like, yeah. yeah, that wasn't it, but okay. Yeah, that was the worst scene I've ever done. Can we do it again? Nope, moving on. It's, yeah. like, it's like they're already changing lights and shit. You're like, yeah. Check the, yeah check the gate. Yeah, check the gate. Check the gate. That's the martini. Uh, uh, no, but, I, would, I would say it's probably the best boot camp I could have possibly had as yeah. well. You know, same thing. It's even though it was considered a drama with Tyler, it was soap opera. Yeah, of course. Ish, you know, and. uh yeah, doing eighty page, fifty pages in a day. It is brutal. Yeah, it, there's there's a, a lot of respect for for soap actors. Because, oh yeah, it's a know, ton of work, right? You know, it's not like normal television where you're you're doing five scenes in an eighteen hour period. You know, it's it's like you're doing the entire script. So. I remember one of the one of the seasons that we shot. I had fifty pages my first day. Yeah, sounds and, about right. And, and <laughs> I got the scripts three days before. Right. And we get on set, and I'm like, you know what? I've got way more than just these 50 pages, but I need to just hyper focus on this, not look at anything else, just focus on this. So I just read and read and read and wrote and did everything I could to prep those 50 pages. Mm. We get halfway through the day and they're like, we're shooting scene, da da da, whatever it was. And I'm like, what? They're like, yeah, we're shooting this scene. I'm like, huh? I didn't recognize it. You know, I was like, can someone give yeah. me a script? And I look at it and I'm like, it's a 15 page scene that I'm leading every other line through the entire thing and I'd never seen it before. Oh, and I God. look and I'm like, oh my God. Like, Tyler, I don't know it, man. So and what happened? He, he goes, you see that You see that bathroom over there? There's a, like a, a porta potty on set. Yeah. A hundred yards. Not even. It was like 75, maybe. He's like, I'm going to walk to that. And then I'm going to walk back and I want you to have it ready. Yeah, there you go. I said, Okay. <laughs> if I want to oh keep my, my job, I'm going to figure this out. And so I just read it as many times as I possibly could. And we shot it in one take. Wow. It was wow. crazy. I would have been sweating bullets. That oh, reminds dude, me I, of like, I can't sweat anymore. So. <laughs> <laughs> I was, you know, I did like drama class in like seventh, eighth grade. You, I think we did like Phantom of the Opera or something and like Oliver Twist. But it reminds me of like having a nightmare of like, being on stage and completely, I mean, it's like the common nightmare, right? Of like not knowing any of your lines and being on stage. Yeah. That, it's terrifying to me. So, so how, how I like officially started acting, um, I was, uh, I was living with my mom in Colorado and, and, uh, I was about to go in the Marine Corps oh, wow. and I was like, I was getting ready to swear in, I already took the test. And then my mom heard about this thing on, on the radio. Uh, it's called the AM- AMTC convention. It's basically like a, a beauty passion, but for like actors and models and stuff. And so my mom was like, listen, the Marines are always going to be there, but I heard about this thing. I think you should go check it out. Um, so I said, okay. So I went and, um, you know, you had to train for, for like for a few weeks and then you, they fly everyone out to Florida and it's like this whole big convention where like, act, you know, directors, casting agents and all that. They're, they're all there kind of judging you and, so I've never done anything like this before. I, th- I, th- I did one play in high school and I dropped out because I was like terrified of being in front of people. Um, and so I, you know, you like you'd put up scenes and then they, you know, you get judged and things like that. And then at the very end, there's this 
five minute monologue that you have to do in front of everybody. And oh man, <laughs> so there's probably like three, four hundred people watching, Ooh. and I'm I was prepping this monologue for days, days prepping this monologue, and uh, I get up there and I'm feeling good, and the first line comes out and I forget everything, <laughs> everything. I uh. can't say one fucking word. Oh. And it was the one of the worst moments of my entire life because I can't really see. I could see like heads. I can't see faces. All I see is lights. And I'm. I literally <laughs> stand there for the full three, four minutes, just standing there. <laughs> and and the, the fucking director of like the whole thing is behind me, and like oh I like I literally God. like I put my head down and I turn around and the guy like puts me aside. He's like, "Hey, hey, kid, you got some balls for standing up there." And um. After that moment, I got like the most callbacks in my group. Really? Yeah, I got just because you stood there. Just because I stood up there, and uh, wow. and I got like a callback from Buckwell Talent Group, which is an agency here in Hollywood, and that's who I ended up officially signing with when I first moved out here. But I literally forgot. I didn't say yeah. one fucking word for that monologue, and I was practicing for for days on that. Bro, yeah. I'm only Ooh. laughing because that is so personally applicable to my life yeah. and so many moments yeah, I've had. It, it, was, it was definitely by far the most embarrassing moment of my life. Oh, oh, man. It sounds terrifying, yeah. but like, yeah. dude, damn, dude. Like, But look at it. Yeah. A one, I mean, one failure yeah. led to a, you know, yeah, and everyone, of success. Everyone was going up there. They were crushing it. They were just doing all kinds of crazy monologues. It's like, fuck, man. I'm oh. done. I don't know, that, that's, I'm, looks like I'm going to the Marines. And then, uh, which isn't a bad thing, but uh, no, yeah. I mean, I was doing it's the same different kind of path. It's a different path. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm going to be be a completely different person right now yeah. if I was in the Marines. Well, that's one thing we've talked about too. Is that you know, always talking about what roles you want to do, dream roles, like yeah. stuff like that. And it's always been for you. I feel the conversations we've had, uh, Navy SEAL, right? Yeah, I think that's something that you and I definitely bonded over. We yeah. we definitely need to write that that story. Yeah, um, well, we're also sitting next to an incredible writer, by the way. <laughs> I'm. Him. No, but yeah. but I've he's great. So Ventismo. where's the where's the Navy SEAL get to work coming? Hey, um, I didn't know there needed to be one. Now that look, I know look, it's coming in hot. Listen, uh, there's a reason I brought us all together today. Yeah. Right. Brock's look. just like master planning behind <laughs> puppet master behind the scenes. That's it. Uh we will not disappoint. Um, um Absolutely not. this is what I was born for. Um Yep. If he, we can he he looks at training as a Navy SEAL just for fun. Yeah, I, I was actually looking into the what is it? It's a uh, seal fit. Have you heard of that? Yep. Yeah, seal fit. That's something, something I want to do. I, we should do that one day. Just yeah, let's do it. It's like it's Will? basically seventy two hours of hell week, right? Um, and it's it's taught by ex Navy SEALs or current Navy SEALs. I'm not sure, but um, right. you write it. We'll go prep. Um, done. I'm in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want I want to do that. Yeah. Um, Are there any roles that you've done so far that were your? Do you have like a favorite, or is there a favorite moment, or is there something that you would want to do specifically mm. in the future? Um, I mean, you know, everything, everything that I've done so far, um, you know, it's, it's kind of just like been a stepping stone for me, like, you know, becoming more comfortable with myself, who I am as an actor and, and, and uh, you know, the choices that I, that I make on screen. And, um, you know, I think like every role is a little bit of part of me and uh, you know, I haven't yet quite done what I, you know, really, you know, crave to do uh, what, what my passion is, but uh, you know, I think I think I'm coming. I'm getting close to that. Uh, but I think in the dark taught me a lot about myself. Um, you know, it's a very dark role, very dark character, um, troubled past, um, and uh, um, you know, before that, uh, I shot a Hulu movie. Oddly enough, it was called Into the Dark, um, yeah. which is a really you know dark character again. So I, I feel like I'm like in this realm of of Into the Dark, In the Dark in the, the abyss, uh, out of the darkness. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, just write the film called dark times. <laughs> yeah. yeah, dark yeah, times. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, teen wolf was really fun, even though, you know, it's like teen wolf was such a fun, such a fun role. I got yeah. to, you know, get all prosthetic and teeth and, um, you know, fight I a, scenes. I had and, a prosthetic too on euphoria. What was that? I'm just, I'm back to back to teen wolf. Sorry. No, let's uh, no, let's let's talk about that prosthetic. But, <laughs> Rock, let's talk going. 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 No, 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 please, let's talk. About, no, no, please, we're gonna cut this out, please. <laughs> I know exactly what it is. Yeah, I know exactly. Hilarious. Um, a particular appendage. Yeah. Um, 
What were we talking about? Teen Wolf. Teen, Teen Wolf. Wolf. Yeah. Teen Wolf. Yeah. Great family. Um, yeah, I was on the last season uh, and I got to play a hellhound. Really cool. That's awesome. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I was on fire, came back from the dead, got shot in the face. It was, it was great. There's something yeah, about that yeah. supernatural space that's so much fun because it has, I mean, for example, the supernatural show, right. it has so many legs because anything can happen. Anything. You could die a hundred times yeah. and come back, you know. You could have a doppelganger. You can. Exactly. <sighs> yeah. I remember, mm. I mean, that show was like a sensation for sure. Yeah. It, yeah, it's was. you know it still has like had a big, like big cultural impact yeah it has a huge huge fan base um and i was happy to be a part of that oh yeah pretty huh? pretty, pretty cool pretty 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 cool pretty what, cool was that um one of your first ones or was that um no no that was that, i'm trying to get like yeah, the chronology it right, was like just... it was it was like a year before i booked in the dark okay um but uh but yeah i'm, I'm also a huge fan of like um you know, I wouldn't call myself a method actor in any way, but, uh, you know, I, I really like diving into these characters and, you know, season two of In the Dark, um, you know, they told me that I was going to be spending a lot of time in prison. Um, and so I, uh, prior to filming, I met with uh, uh, tr one of Toronto's most notorious gang members, uh, spent over half his life behind bars in prison. And uh, he's out now um, and he's writing a book um, about his life in crime and, you know, being in prison and, and so I, uh, you know, I sat down, I talked to him for several hours and um, just kind of like got everything I needed to know from him. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, the network wouldn't let me stay in a prison overnight. That's what I wanted to do. I just wanted to like get behind bars, just feel what it was like to be in there. Hey man, go wow. steal, steal a candy bar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, and he's like, you don't need to do that. He's like, just, you know, get a blanket and a pillow, and go in your bathroom, and just shut the door. That's and so cool. I was sleeping in my bathroom. Uh, for weeks that's wow. yeah. i feel like that's a very good like compromise in terms of here's what it'll feel like without actually doing it yeah i mean there, you know i think a lot of people were like casey this is a cw show what are you doing you're taking this way mm -hmm. too far i was like no i just this is what i want to do this is my craft this is like yeah. that's how i that's how i approach things you know so yeah uh, and your method and it's it's everyone approaches different there's no one way to do it you yeah find i, out I do want to send cw a bill for for what it did to my back uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah so um <laughs> it's not it's not great the um, uh tobias funke in arrested development he did that and uh he goes in and he like it's a whole it's a comedy so it's like a i spoof, love that show yeah. yeah it's a great show um, it's, i love it i love it but that was totally off topic no, no, I, no. it's great it's a great <laughs> arrested show. development's a great show yeah, yeah yeah uh what have you learned most about yourself through acting Good is there course. anything you could say <sighs> now we're gonna get serious oh, let's get a little serious I know it's hard to do, Casey. Um, You're a very handsome man, by the way. Thank you. I agree. I'm giving him time to think. Thank you. Uh, um, but also true. What have I learned with acting? Um, I think first and foremost, I think trust in your instincts. You know, I think I, I think it's really what it comes down to. Um, you know, growing up, I, I didn't really have. Uh, a lot of confidence, but I think I found that confidence in acting. And I think um, it's been such a therapeutic journey for me doing this the last 16 years of my life. You know, I've gave up my entire life for this. So um, if I wasn't getting anything out of it, I, you know, I would have gave up a long time ago. Um, but it's something that it's like, it's like air for me. You know, I just, I need it to breathe. I need it. Um, and, and I think growing up, you know, having a really traumatic childhood, I think, um, movies were there for me film was there for me mm. and i think i would just lock myself in, in my room and i would just watch films over and over and over again and that was kind of like what i enjoyed doing and so it's 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 makes sense of why i, I chose this career path and why i'm i'm yeah. at where i'm at and you know because i i i want to give that back to yeah. other people you know to, to kids and to are going through similar issues and you know maybe thinking like life isn't worth it anymore you know like i, I know i was feeling that a lot growing up and I think, um, you know, if I can give that confidence in other kids, I think that that's, that my job is done. I think that's, you know, that's what it kind of taught me. Um, that's crazy to hear you say that. And that's the only reason I laughed was because I'm like, I've never heard anyone else besides me say that. Yeah. I would say movies were the only escape I really had yeah. as a child. And yeah. it was that thing of like, okay, now I have an opportunity if I really work at this to give that back. Yeah, and absolutely. I, I mean, we've, we've all been in, in a movie theater or at home watching a movie and like, yeah. 
you know, I felt affected by something, by someone's performance, you know, it could be any, any movie, but, yeah. um, I got that a lot through film. And so I think, um, I was just like, this is, this is what I got to do. Yeah. This is my calling. I really felt that there was no better feeling than when you go into a movie, uh, wherever you're watching it and you get lost in it and you forget about everything yeah. else. And I was like, that's how I determined if this is a great film or not, because I didn't think or feel or do any focus on anything other than yeah. what that was. And I was in that universe. Right. You know? I, and I spent most of my, my, my teen years actually thinking Jack Dawson was dead in Titanic. Mm. Um, cause it just affected me so much. Yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. That is by far the most <laughs> appealing quality mm. of films and, and movies for me as well for TV and, and all that to really the escapist nature yeah. of it all. And, mm. Um, I think that's why I fell in love with it. Absolutely. And like, I want to ask you kind of about the, like how has film changed in our lifetimes? Because mm. I feel some shows or films can, you know, prioritize, you know, more of like their own personal agendas or something and take, and that takes away. It almost like brings our world into the film that you're trying to escape from. Right. right. Yeah. And it's like, without, you know, you don't have to agree with that perspective at all in terms of the agendas, but like, how do you think it's changed? Well, that's a really good question. Um, yeah. I mean, I feel like films are so different now, especially like from, you know, like the nineties and early two thousands are just completely mm -hmm. different films now. Um, whew, that's, that's a, that's a, that's a really good question. It's, it's a tough one to answer. Um, I mean, there's, there's just so many influences right, going on right now in, in, in film, in the film industry. And, and, uh, I think, um, it, and I don't think, I don't think it's across the board, right? Like yeah. there, there's obviously going to be films and filmmakers that are still doing it the way we grew up on it and like making it for the right reasons. You know, I think there's just, I would say slightly more examples of stuff being made right. for, you know, austerious purposes. I think that also de determines where society's at and in storytelling, you can look at, you know, the track record of film since the beginning. Mm -hmm. And also, I mean, look at the nineties, for example, it's like, there, it was all about for the majority, that big male action hero right. dominating that space, you know, exactly. whether regard, like whatever it was and following that. And it's like, okay, that's where we were at then where are we now and what are the narratives? And it's like, it's going to continually evolve as we evolve, right? And as we continue to become better storytellers and it's interesting to see what makes its way in, but at the same time, who's creating, you know, who's, who's saying yes or no to these projects, who's right. out there doing it. It's not easy to make a film no. as no. we know, you know, yeah. as we, we all know. Yeah. Um, but what stories do you want to be told? And I think that if there's a different narrative or story style of storytelling or whatever it is, I think, it's up to people like us to go out and go make it, you know, if, right, if it's not for like for us, man, yeah. you know, all of us really that escapism, that, that, that moment of, cause there's so many lessons and so many moments that you can learn from film and TV. I mean, Tyler Perry, for example, one of the things I learned from him is that in every one of his shows and films, he puts the three F's, he calls it family, faith, and forgiveness. Mm. And I'm like, that's awesome. You know, you might not be winning an Oscar for your show, right. but What's the what's the point of the Oscar if if you're out there spreading love and light and and giving people a great experience or just a bunch of laughter you know making people's Absolutely. lives a little bit better and a little bit lighter and and I love what he says too like you know I had the pleasure of going with Brock to uh, two premieres for Medea Films oh great and um, <laughs> it was it was just right place right time and I happened to kind of be around but honestly I don't know, I don't want to like say what he said. But like, but it's along the same lines of just here, here's my film. I, I it's here to make you laugh. And yeah. I hope that's what it does. And like, yeah. I hope it brings light into your life mm -hmm. and you enjoy it. And you sit here for an hour, hour and a half and just have fun. Mm -hmm. Just laugh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, obviously it's not a perfect quote of, of it, but it's exactly what you're saying. The <laughs> I whole, tried. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the whole point is, you know, for him, it's whatever's going on in the outside world let's just take an hour and a half, two hours to just right. have fun and laugh and just enjoy. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've never worked with Tyler Perry myself, but I mean, I've, I've heard from a lot of people that he's incredible to work for. Great uh, guy. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. He's uh, uh, inspiring and, and just an incredible human all around. I would say, um, 
and what he's accomplished also and what he's continuing to accomplish is, is incredible. Yeah. Um, but you know, you look at so many different creators, look at the way, you know, Christopher Nolan tells a story, you know, right. and look at the way Steven Spielberg over time, you know, and, and it's changed the, the way that I view the more you learn and dive into not only writing, but filmmaking, cinematography, acting, yeah. directing. It, it Absolutely. I think, um, you know, one of my favorite films in the past, I would say five years, uh, you know, I've, I've always been a, a really big Shia LaBeouf fan. Um, and you know, his, his film, honey boy. Yeah. Um, you know, directed by a female, um, Alma, who's incredible. Um, that, that film really changed the game for me. I think, um, you know, just shining light on, on topics that aren't necessarily talked about a lot. And that's, you know, childhood trauma and traumatic experiences with, with family and, uh, and, you know, the way you're raised and how it molds and shapes your mind, you know, and, and what, you know, he had to go through. Yeah. And I think, you know, I, th I just kind of identified with that and, and really related with that. Um, you know, I think, I think there needs to be more stories about that. Um, I really enjoyed that film. Yeah, and like, you could yeah. tell that role meant something to him. Yeah, absolutely. You know what yeah, I mean? And yeah. like, it, it really came across on camera, which I really enjoyed that too. Yeah. It's, it's definitely one of my favorite films of all time. That's awesome. I think that we've all, um, obviously you guys just met, but I've had conversations with both of you individually about mental health and, and yeah. I always like to touch on it where we can, Yeah, you know, and for me, it's learning ways and ways to heal and cope and understand and, and things that apply to me that have helped, whether it's a physical thing, you know, working out or ice baths and all that, or, yeah. but are there any things that you've found or done that have helped your mental health over time? I mean, I mean, mental health is something I've, I've struggled with my entire life. Um, it, it's, um, it's always a work in progress. I'm always, always trying to work on myself. Um, and you know, during really, really difficult times, uh, you know, I think uh, what you touched on just now, as far as like, um, finding some kind of hobby, staying active, whether that's working out, swimming, going to the beach, surfing, uh, you know, the most, one of the most important things is being surrounded by people that you love and feel safe around. I think that's a huge, huge thing about getting through that, you know, cause the thing about it, you're like, you know, you, you have this heart that like wants to survive and wants to live. And then you, you're living with a brain that just wants to destroy itself. And you're in constant war with that yeah. every day. You know, it's just a constant battle. Um, some people have it, you know, worse than others and, and, um, are easy, you know, it's easier to, um, you know, get through those dark times, but sometimes, sometimes that doesn't happen that way. And, and you get stuck in it for a while. Um, and it's just really important that you have a, a good support system. Um, mm. and, uh, you know, doing things that you love, whether that's meditating, reading, um, you know, I know that meditating really helped me a lot. I was meditating for like almost two hours a day sometimes, Oh wow. um, which was really helpful. Um, yeah, I think a lot of self care and which is something that we, weren't necessarily taught growing up you know i i definitely wasn't um mm. uh so i think uh i think those are some really important keys to uh you yeah. know to getting through some mental health issues yeah. I really and, and self-care too it's like it's really about what works for you right right and like uh, i don't think there's one blanket answer for everybody no and like uh, now that i'm like 31 especially I've realized that nutrition is a big part of that. Sure. Yeah. And if I'm eating poorly, then I, I feel bad. Like it's, yeah, it's you, you are what you eat hundred yeah. percent. And it's like never more true after you turn 30. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, like identifying those things. So what do I do? Make sure to go to the store, yeah. make sure to get the protein, you know, and it, it could be like you said, meditating nutrition sure. and, and it's, as many of those things as you can put together. Yeah. And, and it's not going to be all of them every day. Right. But like, no, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a constant trial and error, you know, and sometimes things that do work don't necessarily work, you know, and you got to find something new. Totally. Um, or they don't last. Right. Like yeah. might've worked in the beginning. Right. Later on, it doesn't work. Uh, I mean, obviously in the group of friends circle, you know, we talked about so many things and for me to like having a, Tra traumatic tra childhood and, yeah. and going through a lot and trying to understand who I am and my place in the world and, and how I show up in the world. It's, you know, one of the things I turned to at an early age was weightlifting mm. and it was, I um, couldn't tell. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
uh, intermission. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to do a couple push ups <laughs> on the back. But, but for me at an early age, it was so that, and I've, I don't think I've ever shared this publicly before, but it was so that I could get so big and so strong that no one could ever hurt me or mm. anyone I love again. Mm. And I never became a monster. Yeah. I was, you know, all natural, 276 pounds. I was bench pressing <sighs> incline, 525 pounds, almost 600 pounds flat. Beast stupid numbers on everything, yeah. you know, and it was just, and I was 21 years old, you know, I'm walking around. I started as 135 pound, six, three noodle. Yeah. I yeah. couldn't, couldn't, couldn't bench press a hundred pounds to save my life. But it turned into a point where that was the only way that I could feel the endorphins and, and feel happy for a brief moment after yeah. I killed myself for two or three hours in the gym. Right. And I was addicted to that. Cause I was like, I've never, I've had depression my whole life. I've never had happiness. Okay, well, uh, once I got to a certain point of healing after years and years of training, my fuel came from that depression. Mm. But after that, and I healed that part, or at least to a degree, I didn't need the weightlifting anymore. I felt secure. I felt safe. I think that was a huge word. Right. And, and even in the relationships you have as well, and the way you grow up, you know, so many times you, it's more easy to fall in the footsteps of what you're taught. And Yeah, sure. And so to be able to scale back and say, oh, I'm inviting the wrong people in my life. And let me get to this point of healing back to what I was saying with the weightlifting is that I had to find a new source instead of it being essentially a negative or, or not, a, not necessarily a positive, but like mm. it was a pain source now. Yeah. Well, it got me to this point of healing. So I stopped working out and then I'm like, but this is getting me where I want to go. This is what's going to get me to that, you know, leading male role in, in the film sure. that I want to do. Yeah. This is going to open up the doors. It makes me feel good first and foremost. When I first came to LA, uh, no experience acting whatsoever. And the first thing that somebody told me to do is they're like, they're like, just go to a modeling agency, go model, you know, do that. And, and I walked in, they're like, okay, I went into um, Ford and I was just too tall. <laughs> You know, they, they, yeah, they were, I, I got that too. Yeah. They were, they were so awesome. The woman, she was so great. She's like, we would love to sign you, you know, like all this thing, but you know, our tallest model six, three. And I said, I was six, five. I was like, I'm a little taller, but you know, <laughs> I'll shrink down a little bit. But so I went to the next, the next place I went and they signed me across the board. But what they said was cut your hair. Don't work these out anymore. Stop working out. Stop doing X, Y, Z. They told you to do everything that made you feel right. everything yeah. that was me. Yeah. You know, and what did I do? I got long hair and I got muscles, don't I? <laughs> so, and so I stayed on my path and, and so many times. And because of that, I went viral on social media and that right. opened up the doors, you know, and, and one thing after another news. And, and I believe I'm a firm believer in being true to thine own self. Yeah. Bring your own uniqueness to the world Absolutely. And, and do that. And, and the universe essentially will reward you for it and keep on focusing on, on that growth, that continual healing and yeah, acting yeah. for me. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, especially, you know, kids growing up with a traumatic childhood, I think they have, uh, you know, they just have this, like, this crazy drive, you know, you know what I mean? And, and uh, you know, a lot of the times when, when kids go through traumatic experiences, it, it stops them, their brains from developing, you know, completely. Yeah. And, uh, um, you know, and a lot of times, you know, when I, when I get in those moods or I, I feel a little paralyzed, I don't know what to do. Um but acting has always been something for me to channel that energy. And, you know, on my 16 year journey here, like, uh, in, in, in Hollywood, um, you know, I, I started off pretty easy. Like I, I got a, uh, contract role on a soap opera for four years and, you know, mm. things were great. And then, um, you know, after I chose to leave the show, I remember one of the soap opera actors, uh, pulling me aside. He's like, he's like, what the fuck are you doing, man? He's like, you want to go on that rat race right now? Like, just stay. And I was like, I looked at like, you know, everyone and I was just like, this is not my path, you know? And, yeah. and I wanted, I wanted something more and I knew that I was meant for something more. And so I actually didn't work for like a full year, you know, savings was going down and I was like, fuck, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And, um, you know, I was thinking about giving up and then, um, you know, I booked a, an MTV show called eye candy, uh, with mm -hmm. Victoria justice. And then that show went for 10 episodes. We got canceled. Uh, I didn't work for like another year and a half, booked another pilot that didn't get picked up. And then I went through this period for another year after that, where I was, uh, I was testing nonstop. And I don't, if you know what testing is, is it's basically like the last part of the audition. So, you, you know, you have the audition, you have the callback, and then you might have another callback uh, or director session. And then testing is what they offer you. You sign, you basically see how much you're going to make and you're like, holy shit, um, blah, 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 blah. And, and then you got to test with like two, three, sometimes four other people 
with the other actors or actresses that you're going to be working the opposite of. And, you know, you, all this adrenaline's going and it's like, then you don't get it. And it's, you, you just got to rebuild back up on the next audition and the next audition. So that kept happening to me uh, on a course of six months. I probably tested, you know, like I want to say like eight or nine times for different pilots. Didn't get wow. a single one. Mm. And then finally in the dark came and um, I was like, if I don't get this one, then I'm, I'm done. I, I just can't do this anymore. I can't be told no anymore. Um, and so I was looking into charity organizations that, you know, I was going to go to Africa, this, uh, charity called thirst project. Um, uh, I was looking into other ones as well. And, uh, I was like, I just want to get the fuck out of here. I don't want to be in LA anymore. This is not good for my mental health. I need to do something different and need to do something different with my life. And then, um, that's when it happened. You know, I, I got this show and then I've been on that for the last four and a half years. Yeah. Um, but I think that happens a lot, you know, a lot of people get discouraged, but you know, they stick through it and it seems to be when people want to quit, that's when it kind of turns back around. So uh, there's this quote I love that is in relation to that where it says, uh, our greatest successes always come after temporary failure. Mm, I love that. Yeah. And so I think about that all the time because I made a commitment to myself and to this career years ago. And no matter what I said, I'm going to stick it out. I don't care what life throws at me. I don't necessarily know the path that yeah. I'm going to be on, mm. but I'm going to have faith. I'm going to live knowing that it's going to happen. And I know I wouldn't do it if I couldn't be successful at it, but no matter what happens, I'm going to keep trekking forward. Cause there's so many moments where you're sitting there exactly where you're saying, where it's yeah. like, they tell you you're not good enough. You don't yeah. look the part. You don't do this. Your, your acting's not there, whatever. whatever. Yeah. And there's a million excuses that you also hear that aren't even true. It's just to get you out of the door or out yeah. of the way. Oh, man. Or you never hear back in, at all. Right. And there's there's so many factors going into an audition as well. It's like you could be too tall, too short, too skinny, too... Uh, you remind the casting director of her ex-boyfriend or whatever. Like, it's just like, it could be anything. Um, but the, the only thing that you can do is... is um, try and work your ass off on that audition, you know, and, and, yep. and do the best performance that you can so that they have to say yes. Yeah. Don't give them a, don't give them a reason to say no. What would be like three, I mean, that kind of counts as one of them, but what would be like three tips you would give, you know, an actor or an actress who's kind of in that similar position of, you know, they keep getting tests and mm. not quite booking that role. Uh, start looking into <laughs> going to charity organizations and, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> quit. No, um, uh, <laughs> It, it's really, uh, it's, it's tough. It's, it's really all about, you know, how, how much can you handle and how, how much are you willing to push forward? And, and, um, you know, I, th I think, uh, you know, just at that time where I was in my life, I was just like, I've had enough, you know, I've, I've had enough of being told no. Um, and, but probably secretly deep down, I was like, no, fuck that. I'm still, I'm going to stay. I'm going to stay. But, um, uh, I, I would say, you know, uh, you know, certain acting classes were really beneficial for me. I think, uh, you know, I did a lot of, uh, Meisner training. Um, I did a two year Meisner program, which was, which really helped with my acting a lot. Um, if, if you go in the audition room, like needing that job, casting directors are going to, they're going to smell that they're going to, they're going to know. And, you know, I kind of did the opposite. I kind of went in there. I was like, I don't fucking need this job, but I'm going to work my ass off on this this character, whatever, give them my best. And if they don't want it, they don't, then that's it. Whatever. Move on to the next one. Um, but yeah, I think not, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a thin line because you want to care so much about the character and, and work on it, but you also don't want to go in there caring too much. Um, and, and that kind of just worked for me. Um, it may not work for everybody, but, um, yeah, I think, uh, Yes, there's a thin line between that. Um, yeah, I mean, no, that makes sense. Yeah, I, I, you got to be true to you. Yeah, and, and feel it out. I think the majority of things that I've booked, um, especially in the past year, two years, is I did the auditions, crushed it, cared about it. I gave a hundred and whatever percent I right. could of myself, left it all on the table. Yeah, and then walked away, and I forgot about it. Right. And then you get a call two weeks later, yeah. a month later, whatever. And you're like, oh, you're working on, I'm like, I'm on what? What is it? Yeah. I, I remember, yeah. I remember, you know, yeah. first thing after I leave an audition, it's like, I just, I just throw the script away. Yeah. Just let it go. Let it go. And it teaches you to let go too. Right. Yeah. And, and that's one of the things that I, I've learned and love from acting is one, it teaches you to let go and to not carry, to not harbor. Right. right? Uh, but then it also gives you a freedom. Like I always love jumping into a character and being free. 
Because if I throw this coffee mug at the window and break everything or, yeah. or punch someone in the face or whatever, I'm obviously this is physical <laughs> acting. Uh, right. But if I, if I have an outburst and I scream at the top of my lungs, yeah. it's, it's not me, even though that might be what I secretly need. Right. It's the character. And now you have freedom to do that in every which way you want. And then it has a, there's a whole other healing factor behind that. Yeah, you definitely can't go walking into Whole Foods and throw up. <laughs> mug at the wall no, so everyone will look at you like crazy put a camera on me I put, a cam- <laughs> put a camera it's okay yeah yeah, it's yeah okay. we got four right here what do you want to do? <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i mean that's that's the whole that's another thing about acting is it gives you that freedom to to, to be and do yeah anything and, and have people applaud you for it you know yeah like uh sometimes sometimes yeah sometimes sometimes you would hope you would hope yeah. they do we majority always, of the time <laughs> we will always applaud for you thank you i uh, live for the applause um <laughs> lady gaga <laughs> <laughs> um yeah man let's talk motorcycles for a second Ooh. yeah Ooh. there we go mm. Ooh. <laughs> tell me when did you first fall in love with the two-wheel devil um i've always i've always wanted to ride and i never you know never had the guts to like actually go get my license and and you know do that but once covid hit um I just got the, I just got the bug. I just got the itch. Like I was like, I gotta, I gotta do this. So I, you know, I went and took a motorcycle course, like a weekend course, uh, took the test, failed the first time, failed the second time. I think I'm a little dyslexic. So I, you know, I, when they ask you these stupid questions that are, you know, that they're like made to make you, they're made to mess you up. And like, I, I took the bait every time. And then, and then (laughs) the, uh, been there. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, you you get three chances to, to do it. I just hate when it's like, it can be C and D C and D. And then you're like, well, why would they put C and D if it wasn't C and D? (laughs) Exactly. You know, I was like, okay, we'll go with that one then. Hell yeah. Um, so I, I luckily I passed th- the third time and uh, I connected with Brock and we were talking about Harley Davidson and, and, you know, getting, getting some kind of a, you know, hook up with them. And then, uh, um, yeah, they, I, had, they had programs at the time to yeah, give loaner bikes to people. Right. And then yeah. I got introduced to Sean, who's, uh, you know, who's head of the, uh, you know, the influencer team over at Indian motorcycles and um, Brock and I were talking at the time and we, both got bikes from them yep. and uh we started this gang called the cute boy biker gang true story a lot of a lot of cute boys a lot of cute boys in there, yeah. Boys in there. Hell um, yeah, hell yeah. yeah you have to have a beard though to be in it so okay. true yeah. and, a, and a bike and a bike yeah oh, i mean that's that's obvious that's the only two requirements actually. um actually to be on this podcast you have to have a beard so true well yeah. i don't have a bike but i got the beard you got so. the beard yeah <laughs> you got the beard um yeah so bro, you know brock and i just started will's a honorary cute boy Oh wow! Thank you. That's a uh, honor of a lifetime, right you, there. You can there join you. our gang. You can join our gang. <laughs> Thank you. You can yeah. ride doubles. Yeah, <laughs> as they say, nuts to butts. We have to jump you in though, and you don't want to hear how that happens. So let's <laughs> yeah. let's say that for another conversation. Yeah. Um, the initiation. Yeah, initiation. <laughs> gang initiation. Mm. So yeah, we started. Yeah, we started riding for Indian and um, uh, taking trips together and riding around Malibu and you know I'll go meet him at his place and yep. he has this like this route that we take then we and like we always do this route we go he drives like a madman um safely 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 of course uh, of course uh, I'll, I'll never, the cameras are on bro. Yeah, yeah. I'll never forget the first time I rode a bike with with Brock we met up with Sean and we were down in like the where were we Laguna Beach or where does he live uh, I think maybe we went to Newport Newport somewhere, yeah. somewhere down there I've never, I've ridden a bike like on the street and like in a safe environment and, and all that, but I'd never like taken a bike on the, on the street yet. First thing we do is, is he takes me right on the freeway <laughs> and, oh, God. I, and I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm literally like, I'm, uh, this is, this is the day I die. This is it. And I'll, I'm like on this little, little, like str- barely street legal bike. And these guys got these huge motorcycles and I'm just like, fuck. Man, I'm, I, that was Sean's little like. Uh, it was like his, it was like initiation. It was my like game yeah. initiation. See yeah, if I yeah. could see if I could. Hang. I would not have rode that on the freeway, dude. I, dude, it it's, was like it's, cr- it's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy when you get on a freeway. You, you like because when you're on a car on a freeway, you don't understand like the pressure of like a semi coming by you or like another oh, car yeah. coming by. Right. But you feel everything on that bike when you're on the freeway. Um, and so that was 
So it's a, it's, I mean, it was, I can't remember what bike it was. I now it was cause it was like years ago now, but it was a very light bike. Yeah. And yeah. when it's light, it's, it's easier um, to maneuver, which is great. But on the freeway, it's, I would say you, I wouldn't recommend it because it's very easy. Like you yeah. said, a semi, a big gust of wind will come in. Brock and, and was like, like, like wobble. <laughs> Brock yeah. was like my, my angel. He was like, he was in front of me, like stopping traffic in the free, like in the middle yeah. of the freeway, you know, letting cars go, stopping cars, like, making sure I can get over. Like, <laughs> it was, it was great. Um, uh, the, the footage I've seen from like the trips. Yeah. I mean, it looks so amazing. I mean, just yeah. being out there yeah. and like, I love easy rider. I love that film. Yeah. And like, mm. it reminds me of all that. It's, it's so much fun. It's, it is another thing like acting. It's a freedom, you know, and it's a, something that forces you to be present. You know, you have to be present yeah. when you're acting as well, but it's just, there's something about riding that if, if it hooks you in, yeah. you're not getting out. Yeah, you can't. And you can't I will up. never recommend someone to start riding. But if you get the bug, you get the bug. And yeah. riding with you, riding with so many friends who are, are that were at the time beginners or are beginners now that I've ridden with, I had this innate need to protect people. Yeah. Like, and so, like you were saying, I don't give a crap if it's a if it's a fleet of cops behind me. If you're not getting through safe, I'm yeah. stopping them. It doesn't matter to me. Yeah. I, I will I will cut people off. I'll do whatever I got to oh, do man. because. At the end of the day, your safety and your health right. and, and that moment is way more important than breaking a couple laws. Like exactly. Say, obviously, you don't break laws, but no. if it comes to your life and that, I'm going to keep you safe, buddy. Right. I'm, right. And I and I trust you. <laughs> I normally don't go on the freeway without him. So, and then just the other day, we we did a freeway ride, and I'd never uh, split lanes before. You know, like that's that's always been like a no no for me. I'm like, I'll I'll do the freeway. I'm not doing that shit. I would I, never. Like, that's so like. <laughs> How great was but, it? And so, for, yeah, obviously Brock, first thing he does is just- I did it. Start splitting lanes. So I'm always, I'm, you have to be aware of everything, but I'm always hyper aware when I'm riding with someone. So I'm constantly checking the mirror and everything around me at all right. times. So right. I know where every single car is at all times. I have to. I'm always looking to see what Casey's doing, you know, and, and whoever's with me. Right. So I cut the first one and he kept right up and I'm like, oh, I guess we're going to do this because I wouldn't have kept going if it yeah. wasn't the case. So I'm yeah, gonna, you're kind of like, I'm not going to leave him in the dust, right? But we did that and then he kept up, man. Yeah, we went the whole way. Let's the whole say way. We, uh, we, we got somewhere that was 30 minutes and uh, 16. So. Yeah, we got, we cut the time in half. So. Yeah. Well, the LA freeways are no joke. Like, yeah. like compared to the rest of the country, they're extremely busy, large, you know, fast. But like California does have roads like the one and you know if you go up past like malibu yeah I mean, those roads are like beautiful yeah. we do a lot of Ma mahalan riding uh we go up, up to this place malibu. called what the old, old, pl place? old place yeah yeah, yeah it's like that's like our the steak sandwich is off the charts oh man that sounds good yeah it's so good it's and they're massive portions right can i follow you guys in my car oh, 100%. <laughs> yeah that's great absolutely <laughs> great driving for that. cars too yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it is good drive we should do that one day it'd be awesome i'll yeah. throw in a podcast and just yeah. follow <laughs> you ever think you do a big trip a long trip a couple thousand miles yeah i would love to yeah in the yeah, yeah I, I would i would love to do that um just gotta find someone crazy enough to want to do that i think you got don't, one don't you know i'm local <laughs> <laughs> it would be fun dude yeah that would be awesome um that's yeah i would like to do something like that even like a like international one too that, that would be, be really cool down um, to like la paz yeah i was talking with johnny from harley uh cool dude man he was saying uh they do these safari africa because he's south african safari african south tours african on, on uh on bikes dude and we were gonna do it but then covid happened and it was like a whole deal fucking uh, covid man it messed up a lot of things but also yep. i would say there is some light at the end of the tunnel with that it changed the way i feel i show up in the world mm -hmm. um the things that i take for granted uh the gra gratitude i have for people interactions people i love you know yeah i i you know so but at the same time, you know, I miss the old days. <laughs> um, Without, yeah. Yeah. Well, especially since I'm, I'm such a homebody too. And, you know, I, I it was kind of like a, a deloading time for me and, yeah. and just getting back to like, you know, stable, stable thinking and, and being present and focusing yeah. more on myself. And, um, you know, cause I, I, I have a lot of like FOMO, you know, I just like, I see like other people doing things. I'm like, fuck, man, I'm not doing enough with my life. Um, <laughs> it, it's an, it's a, it's a poison. It really is to think to Who's to, like to stay active. Right? Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but it, yeah, it, it did teach me to, to kind of calm down and, and be okay with where I'm at. And, um, oops. So I feel like I could use more FOMO. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I just get so like, 
I'll be like working until eight o'clock and like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, d- I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm 35 years old now. I'm like, it's fuck. It's eight 30, man. It's eight 30 PM. Right. Oh, I'm, I'm getting there. Yeah. I'm catching up. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, uh, I'm with you guys. Trust me. Yeah. We, um, we actually, uh, I got a nap time in about 20 minutes. So right. yeah. I think about 35 is like you get up and like, just like everything hurts. Yeah. You know, I'm only 30 and everything hurts. So I don't even, yeah, know. just, just wait, just wait five more years. I was on set and we, we were filming this guy. Uh, he was, he had like, I don't know, a hundred horses or something. He's a big horse, cowboy, everything. Uh, but he was probably 75, closer to wow. 80. Wow. And he was, he was going, he was talking to one of the guys who was younger, said he was hurting, his low back was hurting or something from riding the horses. The guy's probably 40, 45. Uh, and he goes, listen, in my 30s, it was every couple years, maybe something to hurt. Right. In my 40s, it was every like, you know, two to three years, whatever, 50s. He's like, once you hit 70, it's just every other week, man. <laughs> <laughs> so stop your complaining, you know? Yeah, yeah. And you think about that too, because like, yeah, where we're at now, like dude, I've had so many injuries and it is brutal, but you change the way you approach your life and, right. and the activities you do and the way you do, you know, training and just everything in general, because yeah. you have to adapt. But then you think, you know, as we get older, that's just part of the aging process, but it's how can we, I don't care about being like, I mean, I, I like to have muscles, yes, but I don't care about that. I care about how long, how, how much longevity can yeah. I have? How healthy can I be for a long time? How long can I walk comfortably? Yeah, you know? your priorities yeah. kind of switch there. Yeah. I mean, I used to run like seven miles a day, like five days a week. I wow. went in this like huge running phase and then I realized like, okay, my legs hurt, my knees hurt, my feet hurt. Yeah. So I'm like, how can I improve that? And you, I just run less, but like still get it in. Right, right. And I got really into jump roping. And what I realized is like, if you do it correctly, you know, 20 to 30 minutes of jump rope is going to be better from a cardiovascular perspective sure. than an hour or two of running anyway. Yeah. So are you doing like double unders or just single, single unders? Just, I mean, just single. Just, you know, it's a CrossFit term. You know what I mean? No, for sure. I don't, I don't <laughs> go all like Rocky with it. I just right. like. But I'm I'm good with like just the normal rhythm and yeah. I can like no that's it, keep as long that as going, but. as long as you're moving your body you yeah, way. yeah yeah well that was when I when but I but it's had like my, another life hack right yeah. of like I love it it's actually better for me I can do it in my backyard yeah and like do it anywhere and it's super healthy yeah so like my uh, when I broke my heel um, I completely stopped moving like being active everything hurt all the time i tried to go to the gym but then i got herniations in my neck then i tore my meniscus in my knee it was just a a snowball effect of issues and so then i started eating bad and and i had a terrible routine and just you know every one thing after another i just was doing everything that wasn't me and but it became my habits and my habits were terrible at the time uh and my uncle said to me one time because you know he'd been he's done so he's done multiple tours he's done 25 years in in special forces and oh wow he was telling me because he, he and he he has to wake up in the middle of the night just to stretch just to be comfortable to go back to bed every single night and he was saying what it happens when you stop moving i mean your body just kind of shuts down i think you know so when, yeah you, when you stop moving you're yeah. dead yeah exactly he said you're dead you so always movement is life right find ways to move whatever mm-hmm. that is for you it doesn't have to be it's a know, trick question yeah that's what was. <laughs> gotcha <laughs> Yes. We're gonna use this clip. So, uh, so during that time, you know, w- when you were going through those injuries, what, what, and you know, eating unhealthy, what do you think pulled you out of that? Yeah, well, I mean, so the truth of the story is, it was acting, okay, um, without a doubt, because I went through a major depression, um, was worst shape of my life. I didn't like, I didn't recognize the person I saw in, in the, the the mirror, and everything was adding up one after the other. And then, like you said, your nutrition is such a massive factor. I was eating you know, Taco Bell and Domino's right. and just what, all the time, just terrible, terrible stuff. Unless they want to sponsor us, <laughs> then I'll get it tattooed. <laughs> Did you hear that Taco Bell? You hear Did that you Domino's? That? Sorry, continue. A- any fast food chain? <laughs> um, but no, and, and for me, it took, I, I had this audition for Righteous Gemstones and I remember looking at myself, I tried to get a pump. I could not get a pump. I, I hadn't worked out for almost two years. Uh, and it was a muscle man, you know, that was the, yeah. the, one of the, the characters, you know, that's what he was doing or that's who he was, that crew. And I remember looking up what this character was and it's these guys that go around power lifting and like Bible uh, thumping, you know, like right. spreading the word, but also like ripping phone books in half and doing all this stuff. And I saw all these videos. So I did the research 
And I'm like, okay, well, they're wearing wristbands. They're wearing, you know, belts and stuff. I was like, I can put a belt on and suck my stomach in. I could try to look, wear my oh, small man. shirt. I did everything I could yeah. to like try and look good. And somehow I booked the role, man. And from there I was like, I got to get back in shape. That's amazing. You know, wow. and it was a six, seven month journey back into it. And it's been almost a year now yeah. since that moment. And I've never been in better shape in my life. I never felt better yeah. mentally, physically. Um, I'm constantly trying to find that better thing, doing so yeah. much recovery stuff. But it was that like finding my passion and getting back to what I love. And it was that. And it be, because I mean, the year before was, a, was a, a year basically dry spell for me when right. it comes to acting. And then COVID happened. There was absolutely nothing. And to get that role, I was like, holy crap. That's amazing, man. I'm, I'm so proud of you, of, of your journey and how far you've come. And it's, you've, they've come a long way, dude. Likewise. So, yeah. For both of you guys. Yeah, for all of us. This is a group, good group of guys right here. Yeah. Dude, just working hard and yeah. continuing that journey. Yeah. yeah. The dream is always alive. Is there a franchise um, that you would love to be a part of? Because there's so many out there that massive franchises, whether it was, hasn't been done yet yeah. or uh, could be, you know, there's Marvel, there's Halo, there's, there's Star Wars, <laughs> there's, you know, let's like. Not, let's not talk about Halo. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we're not. Uh, yeah, I think. Uh, um, you know, anyone that knows me knows how big of a fan I am for Mass Effect, and which is a, a video game that I, I, I'm obsessed with. Um, yeah, I've, 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 I want to play Commander Shepard. That's that's Dude, what I want. I can totally picture that. Holy mm, crap! Yeah, yeah Commander Shepard. That would oh be that would be the franchise that I want that's right awesome. there. Dude, um, I'm also completely obsessed with Stranger Things. I think I've watched oh. the new season three or four times now. Dude, this one got heavy, huh? Ooh, super heavy. I I love how they the whole like idea of this season revolves around trauma like mm. that's what the whole season revolves yep. around yeah and I, I i love that they tied that into this um uh, yeah i'm on is, episode three but i'm like dying to oh, finish okay. it okay but and then they I, so when 11 dies in the end of the season yeah. <laughs> <laughs> spoiler spoiler no, no, no i'm just kidding that was incredibly well done and dude even just the first episode when you get to the end and and that moment that happens you're like whoa yeah 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 like and, heavy and how you know that scene with maxine when you know she gets lifted up and in, in, in the yeah. graveyard and and uh how music you know is is the key that kind of gets her out of that yeah. that darkness you know mm -hmm. and uh i think it's just a wonderful metaphor um, absolutely yeah so they I, it's just incredible writing can't wait for uh, part two. Who we were yeah. talking about? I think it was with Shay or someone. How like the impact of music and right. how, how it can just like instantly bring you out of a you oh, know, yeah. funk. It's yeah. it's like it's. I mean, what I, for me, every day I've got to go through a playlist that is applicable to me during the day when I'm working out. It's it's it changes the trajectory. You know, yeah, if I true. need extra boost, yeah, I put on, you know, Pantera, uh, Celine Dion, Celine Dion, Taylor Swift, <laughs> Taylor, T Swift. Um, and it's funny cause I will do that. <laughs> you know, I believe it. Yeah. yeah. And, and it changes that mood, but it's the same thing when you watch a film, you know, and, and the score is just incredible and those songs can last forever. And it just, there's nothing better than that music yeah, and, I, yeah. and bringing us together and, and it can take you back to a memory you know right. like i grew up listening to emo music dude you just yeah, throw one of those songs on i'm like yeah you throw one of those songs on the, the guy liner comes out paint my nails <laughs> yeah. i start jogging all of a sudden yeah. one, one of my eyes yeah. gets covered a little bit of hair. <laughs> <laughs> i was i was one of those kids I, was, I used to be in a in a metal band growing up and uh, in I high was, school i was in an emo band were you really yeah you, I was I, I was how am I just too. hearing this right now? What what did you play? Were you singer? We were all in a drummer band. and I sang too. You were a drummer and a singer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and, then I, I, and then I hit puberty and I couldn't sing anymore. Okay. I, I need to see photos we'll bring, ASAP. We'll bring it back. Immediately. I need to see yeah. these photos. Yeah. I, I have band photos of like like black long hair like covering my face with like a blonde streak in it. And I, I used to I used to go <laughs> warped <tour. laughs> I used to go shopping in uh um like Hollister, uh, Abercrombie and Fitch, like the girl section. And I used to get wear girl jeans. Um, Cause like you I, couldn't get uh, the guy's jeans, which just weren't tight enough. Let, me tell, you Let yeah. me tell you something. I used to work at Abercrombie. Same. Did the same, but not only that gap low key had the best girl jeans ever. Really? Yeah, dude. It's like a little, little unknown secret. It's the best kept secret. I've yeah. always had also, like <laughs> thick football legs. So I'm like, I could never even, yeah. even if I tried. See, I have, I had really skinny legs 
and uh, shouldn't have been wearing that skinny of jeans at the time. <laughs> so got it. Got it. I, I did okay. D Snyder for Halloween. I did like the blonde wig and the black nail polish. That who, was pretty good. Who? Uh, Twisted Sister. Oh, D. Snyder. So, I'm, I, I didn't hear that. Sorry. No, oh. no, all good. Zach Sorry, Snyder? I'm like far away Zach from Snyder? the mic. I was like Zach Snyder. No, no, D Snyder. Yeah, D Snyder. Twisted. Right. Like, uh, yeah, you, I want to rock. Now, wanna now that I'm rock. thinking about it, you might never see these photos. Listen, I got photos. Listen, we are not releasing this podcast until I see those photos. <laughs> yeah. So, um. We'll get did, they should actually did be he sign the, the cover of this podcast is his email face. All three of our best photos. Yeah. Okay. We all have to yeah. be wearing girl jeans. Okay. I, I well, think I had actually leather pants on for this. Really? Oh, that's yeah. amazing. Oh, wow. That's <laughs> great. That's great. Any uh it just makes me think of Halloween. You have any great Halloween costumes yeah, you know, that you've worn? 100%. Um yeah, I've had some good ones. Yeah. I, I like to go all out for that. Uh, um uh after the dark knight came out, uh, you know, like I went full, full Joker. Ooh. I wore the nurse outfit. I was walking around West Hollywood as in character. Um, pretty sure I scared a lot of people. <laughs> in the middle of June. In the, uh, <laughs> in the middle of June. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I go all out. I like, yeah, cool. it's like, it's like, what's the point if you're not going to go all out for Halloween? You know, no, so, you got to have fun with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. You got it. You definitely got to have fun with it. Um, what about you guys? What's your, what's your top Halloween costume? I'm going to base it off experience and okay. uh, me and Will went to uh, Adam Levine's Halloween party. Okay. And I, oh, I know what you're going to say. Sounds like a build up. <laughs> dressed up as Fat Thor. You, he, he looked exactly wow. like Fat Thor. I went like, to a costume shop, got a fat belly, got a fake beard. It was no huge. way. I did it to the nine, dude. And it was, it was incredible. As an, you know, as an actor, so many times you look like what you look like and you right. go out and do this. Being able to put this beard on, put this fat belly on, not give a crap about what I look like. It was the most liberating feeling I've ever had in my life. That's amazing. Uh, we are <laughs> surrounded by all these famous people and all these people, like just thousand people plus at the party anyways. And I remember looking around and everyone's like, what's everyone wearing? Who's who? What's looking? They're all, a lot of people are so worried. That's so good. And we're over here having the time of our lives, dude. So, I, so you went as Fat one. Thor, who did you go as? I had my... Costume, like custom Casamigos race car outfit. Okay. okay. It, was, it was cool. You, I like you it because it's like right? super comfortable and it's like a jumpsuit. I see. So, oh. so it's like very easy and like. So you guys are having the time of your lives out there. Okay. It, yeah. Adam throws um, awesome parties. He usually does like a couple days after the Casamigos one. So we'll do like yeah. Casa and that. So you got to get on the Halloween tour. Dude, Rage Against the Machine played. Yeah, my, it's crazy because I, I, I checked my mailbox for the invite and it wasn't, wasn't necessarily in there. So it's, you still, it's, it's totally, it's totally it's fine. Though, to like, let's, let's talk about it later. You, you still live in the same, hmm? same place in uh, uh, La Jolla? Yeah, same place. Okay, cool, dude. Same that's, place. that's where, yeah, that's yeah, where yeah. you sent your invite. Right? All right, cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, um, I'll start thinking about my costume now. You should. I'm a, I already have been too. I'm thinking Peaky Blinders could be kind of our cool. costume. My, my girlfriend and I have to oh. dress up together. So what's uh? We did Blade Runner this oh. last year. Oh hell so yeah! I, so I went as uh. There's that one scene where like the the girl with the blue wig co comes out of the screen and and she like points at him and it's it's uh. Anna de Amos. De Amos, de Amos. yeah. <laughs> She's wearing these black uh contact lenses that cover the the, the eyes. And yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, we got her some for the costume. Oh wow! And we spent. Uh, probably two hours trying to get them in her no. eyes. Yeah, because they're oh, huge. The worst. And I felt so bad because she was like, she, oh. she was getting frustrated. And she was like, starting to panic a little bit because we had to leave. Yeah, and we couldn't for the life of us get these. It's so yeah, hard. Like we're <laughs> I try to get normal ones in, like normal size. Yeah. Like, and, and I couldn't get it. These things cover the entire eye, and it it was just it was so hard, and I felt really bad for her. But there was a we have a buddy Max Blank um, who introduced us actually. Yeah, and we were at one of those parties and he was like a vampire or something. And he had those one big black yeah. contact or something. Like yeah. that. And I remember it, we were sitting there um, and all of a sudden it popped out of his eye. It just oh shot out, but it flew through the air and I watched him literally catch it with oh. one finger like that. And then he put it right back in. I was like, that is the craziest thing I've ever <laughs> who, seen. Who is he? Harry Potter with the yeah. golden snitch. Just basically right. him, dude. Yeah. That's crazy. That's man. a total Max Blank move, dude, out of nowhere. Um, I'll start. Impressive. I was like, your reflexes are off the charts, bro. Yeah. 
you're a, you're he, a, you're a phenom. He must work out, man. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he definitely does. Yeah. I, I actually worked out at his place with his uh, Lou Ferrigno bench set <laughs> when I was uh, shooting that film in New York. Lou Ferrigno. What is that? Lou Ferrigno is like a. No, I know who Lou is, but what it is was it? just that he made a, a a set of bodybuilding like bench press with this his name logo and all that whatever. And he said, I need that. Mm. It was back in the day. It's old school. But I bet it, you guys were in heaven. Oh, yeah. great, dude. Mm. Nothing better. Mm. Hell Nothing yeah. better. The Hulk's uh, workout equipment. Exactly. Oh, that's yeah. actually I didn't put that together. We should work out more often though. I remember we we worked out once oh, yeah. once together. You look good though. No, I got to I got to gain those LBs back. All right. You know I mean? How about we, this? I got yeah, the gym training. equipment coming here. Let's oh. start training. Okay. For our Navy SEAL role that I'll Will start writing. He's going to write. Done. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be good. Dude, appreciate you, man. Dude, you. thank you guys so yeah. much, man. It's been a pleasure. Love you guys. Love you, Brock. Love you too, bro. Thank I'm you. I'm just happy that two of my best friends could meet. Oh, it's a great man. time. Love, love you got it. it on camera for the first time. All right, let's go drink some Casamigos. Let's perfect, go. perfect. <laughs> <laughs> right, Thank you for watching. Don't forget to drop a like if you enjoyed the video. And subscribe and hit the bell for a whole lot more to come. Thanks for tuning in to Studio 22.